Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. All blessings, honor, glory, and power be unto the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone who taught me this truth, and salutations to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Amon Gabar, back with another lesson, Lord willing to edify and to feed the lambs of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, through the Holy Spirit. Lord willing, this is an edifying lesson to the elect of the nation of Israel. The mystery of the wood woos. All right, a wood woos, a wood woos. All right, now wood woos is, is pretty much a medieval depiction, artwork depiction of what they say is a mythical creature that dwelt in the woods, right? They dwelt in the woods. They were they were pretty much a terror to humanity. You know, they dwelt among the woods. They 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 tend to look extremely hairy, wild mannered, uh, violent nature. And this is an image from the medieval times depicting the wood wolves. W O O D W O S E. All right. Wood woes. And what does this creature look like to you? Or who does he look like to you? We all know. We know exactly who he looks like. So, this is an image that I pulled up on, um, on Google. All right. As you see, it says wood woes. And these are a few images. The mysterious myth, myth, mythological creature called the wood wolves, right? I'm going to show you that, you know, it's no myth. This is no myth at all. Now, when you read the Wikipedia caption, the first one on the list, it says, The wild man, the wild man of the woods, or woodwos. Woodwos is a mythical figure that appears in the art and literature of medieval Europe. Medieval meaning the Middle Ages, which is, which is also known as the Dark Ages, which the Dark Ages is roughly around the period between, uh, let's say, around 300 to... 13, 1400s, around that time, just just a, a, a figure, you know, a, a rough period of a thousand years. Um, because shortly after the Dark Ages, you have what you call the Renaissance, which means rebirth. Which you know, Lowell and I'll get into that a little more later. It says the wild man. The wild man of the woods or wood woes. Wood woes is a mythical figure that appears in the art and literature of medieval Europe. And that was Jake's ruling Israelites. All right. After the Roman Empire were taken over by Israelites. It says comparable to the, sat the satyr or fawn type in classical, mythological and Syl Sylvanus and the Roman god. Of the woodlands now there's a couple uh articles that i went to so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go to a few of them and get some scriptures in between so this is from a um, website called the astonishing astonishing legends.com it says the woodwos stories of large humanoid figures that resemble apes have covered all seven continents and beyond so it would not be surprised that you that that even so assume me that it was so I can read that again. So it would not surprise you that even England has a Bigfoot tale. The wood woes, however, unlike some mentions of Bigfoot, especially in North American, this English version of excuse me, this English version is related to the elf like spirit that haunts the forests of its homeland. 
Unlike the pic descriptions of the North American Bigfoot, the Woodwolf is said to be smaller and even more manlike. They are usually reported at six or seven feet, walk on two feet, and appear like men with gorilla like features and thick hair covering their entire bodies. Their hair is almost uniformly described as medium brown, medium brown with an orange or red tint. Medium brown with an orange or red tint. Just keep in mind all the descriptions. It says Woodwolves translates roughly to a woodman, to woodman or man of the wood. It says, and it is believed that some English surnames came from the same word such as Woodhouse. Wood, wood wolf's imagery is evident in England from the 8th all the way to the 16th century, depicting these men of the forest, which seem rarely to be women. 8th century, which would be around, um, I believe, the 700s to the 16th century, would be around the 1500s. Yeah, I believe it's around 1500s. So you got from the 700s all, all the way to 1500s. Which, which covers a, a, a large portion of the medieval period. It says, um, they were depicted in a variety of forms, sometimes in dramas, other times in medieval paintings and illuminated manuscripts. There are not, there are not many stories surrounding them. However, in myth and illustration, they seem to be a bit more of a trickster creature, more like one of the fae than the missing link reports of sighting the woodwolves and their habitations claim that they carried or had access to clubs primitively potter uh primitive pottery like bowls just like how you see the depiction of a caveman walking with a club all right remember this is this is um and we know because of biblical prophecy and understanding that this ain't no myth all right this ties back into the man known as esau it says, reports and sighting, I read that. It says, and even simple bow and arrows. If threatened, they would sometimes raid small villages, taking their livestock, and may maybe even a young maiden or two. Some folklore also connect the wood wolves and the wild man and green man uh, folklore. One of the most infamous sighting came long after the 16th century in Southford, Lancashire, England, Deborah Haswell claimed she saw wood wolves in 1982. Sandra was known was a known Bigfoot researcher and was in a park at a young age, at the young age of 15. In an overgrown section of the park, she and her friend noticed a wood wolf out of the corner of their eye. When they reacted to seeing him, the wood wolves escaped back into the woods. According to Sandra, the Woodwolf's expression seemed more confused and perhaps even scared. Sandra claimed at this moment she realized the creature, although frightening to her, was no monster and may have just been in the wrong place at the wrong time. So this person, Sandra, her encounter of a Woodwolf, pretty much she encountered a naked Edomite. She encountered a naked Edomite, unshaven because... You will see, you will see, we're going to see um, Esau back in his, his true state when the kingdom come. When there's no Gillette, no shaving cream, no clippers, you know, when there's none of that, no, 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 um, husbandry, uh, supplies for these people, we're going to see what they truly look like. Give, you know, give an Edomite a year, all right, because they grow their hair so fast, give them a year without any shaving equipment. I'm gonna show you a video real quick. So back to the Sandra person, she she encountered a, a a naked Edomite man. That's why it says, um, when Sandra seen it, her, her, uh, the Wood Wolf's expression seemed more confused and perhaps even scared. So this 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 naked Edomite man, this hairy naked Edomite man was 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 uh, scared, you know, and then that's why he ran back into the woods. He was, he was just a regular Edomite, just being an Edomite. So that's when she realized that although it was frightening her, it, she, it, it wasn't a monster. And it may have just been in the wrong place at the wrong time. So that Edomite was at the wrong place at the wrong time. 
All right, I'm not going to read any more of this, which that was pretty much almost it. But let me show you something real quick. All right, this is a video. Um, it says, hairiest man shaves his entire chest and back for bodybuilding. All right, so I'm going to play a little bit of it, but I'm going to skip around just to get to the point. I went to my eighth grade graduation in middle school, like going on to, a, you know, we're going to high school. We had a pool party in the summer, and I didn't realize how bad it was until I take off my shirt, hop in the pool, and all my friends are like, dude, you have a bunch of back hair. <laughs> I was like, yeah, so I didn't realize that was un that was unusual. And so at that for point, for a 14-year-old to have a bunch of back hair, they're like, no, 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 you have a bunch of back hair. You have more than my father has on what I have to do every day. I have to shave my head. No. Or no. if I'm out of... Audience. I only got a one person audience. <laughs> I can't see the back. Let's see the back. Oh, that is one hairy back. <laughs> that's a, that's a wobos. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You're a hairy guy. Zoom in shot. Okay, so. <laughs> and that's. And obviously, you could tell that he uh he trims around the collar of his neck. You know, he said he had a beard. I'm I'm a, I'm a hundred percent sure his beard was, was like a like like bushy as hell and long. You know, but you could tell he shaves around the collar, collar of his neck to try to cloak his um his hairiness when he's you know wearing a t-shirt or a shirt or whatever. You know, now imagine this man with a with a full full blown beard, you know, long hair in his head. All right, not shaving his arms like he did, and just letting it all grow. Okay, that's the creature. That's the cre the, the creature that um that that that's being described in this medieval painting. So, matter of fact, I'm going to jump around the scriptures real quick. Matter of fact, let me read Isaiah 25 first, 25 and 7. It says, And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. And what's that talking about? The lies. Yahweh Hashem is going to destroy all the lies that's been covered all right, over all these nations, including us. Especially us, mainly us, all right, and the rest of the world, okay, because that's how Esau have taken this world by deception and lies. So the Lord destroying the covering cast over all the people, the lies, the veil is a covering. He's destroying it, so the world is 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 finding out who this man is, all right, and that he cannot run from his identity of of who he really who he really is according to the scriptures, all right, because again, like I said, take away a shaving stick. The Gillette, the shaving cream, and these different, uh, uh, you know, pampering items from these Edomites. And they're going to look like they did when they were driven into them caves. All right? When they were driven into them mountains. Okay? So, um, this is the book of Genesis, chapter 25, I mean, excuse me, 27, verse 11. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, behold, and this is when, um, when um, the, the blessing was about to uh, take place and then um, Jacob, you know, uh, was uh, supplanted, all right? And Rebecca helped him get the blessing. So it says, and Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man and I am a smooth man. So the Edomites by nature are a hairy individual. They're hairy people. They are very hairy, all right? The man and woman. Very, very hairy. And then Jake, on the other hand, are smooth. All right? It's very rare you find a bunch of uh, uh, Jake Israelites with the same amount of hair that Esau got. Some Jakes are totally smooth. No hair in their arms, no hair in their legs, no hair in their chest. Just woolly afro, woolly bed. You have some Jakes with, you know, with hair, you know, every now and then, whatever, whatever. But for the most part, the Edomites are a, a hairy race of people. All right, by nature, and that guy in the picture, you know, that guy in the picture, uh, in this video, he shows that, you know, you know, he, he's a great depiction of that, you know, and then when he's done, you wouldn't even tell, you, you wouldn't even be able to tell that the man is a hairy man, all right, because this is not normal in society, so to speak, you know, there will, there will be outcasts, there, there will be People connect the dots like, yo, y'all look like cave people. 
All right. Now, I, um, I, I saved some pictures. Let me um, pull it up on my phone. Let me pause this real quick. All right. And these are some more pictures of some hairy individuals. I'm just going to scroll through them. Hairy Edomite. Half shaven Edomite. These are your these are your mythical creatures that they're talking about. There's the same guy in the video. Edomite woman. Edomite woman. Edomite woman. Yeah, and that's it right there. <clears throat> so let me go back to let me read this one more time. Genesis 27 and 11. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man. And I am a smooth man. All right. These Edomites are uh, extremely hairy. You know, that's why they were looked, they were, they were depicted the way they are. In this um, in this article about these wood wolves, now there's another article right here. I believe I read this one. Yeah, yeah. Let me read this one. This is from um, itotd.com. It says the wood wolves, the Bigfoot's European cousin. And now it reads on to say, like the Loch Ness monster or the abominable snowman. I usually think of Bigfoot or Sasquatch. As he's sometimes known as a distinctly 20th century phenomenon. However, while it's true that interest in these legendary creatures was stoked by images captured through the modern means of photography and film, the stories surrounding them actually go back centuries from the lakes of Scotland to the heights of the Himalayas to the Pacific Northwest of America. Locals have long attested to the presence of these uh, el elusive beings. Although little is known today, a mythical creature with striking similarities to Bigfoot was believed to exist even an even longer time ago in medieval Europe called a wood wolf, or in Anglo-Saxon um, Wudu Wasa. This wild man of the forest was a, a familiar figure in the literature and visual arts of the Middle Ages. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, walk on the wild side. As with Bigfoot, the wood wolf's natural territory was believed to be the forest. Hence the name literally, um, Woodman. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we know that Esau dwelt in the clefts of the rocks, right? According to the scriptures, um, tells you that in Obadiah, whose habitation is high. Even the book of Job 30 goes into um, Esau and his dwelling, which I'm going to get that. But when it says... Um, that his natural territory was believed to be the forest, hence the name Woodwolves. You gotta you gotta picture it, you or you gotta imagine it that if Esau Esau was living in the caves, now in order to hunt for food and get food, you know, when it came down to it, where where would you go and get food at? You would go into the forest, all right? You would go where there's other animals dwelling at. All right. Now we know according to Job, which let me get that real quick. Because it talk about his his meats and what he ate. So let me read it. This is Job 30 and 1. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock, which are these, these Edomites, all right, like we always get into. And how is Esau younger than us? Because we older than him, all right? Remember, this man gave up his birthright for a morsel of meat. So we have the inheritance of the firstborn. All right, which was predestined to happen that way from the beginning. All right, and Job wouldn't even have; he would despise, he would, he would, he would envy to have them even lay with the dogs of his flock because of the things that they would do. They were detestable, or they are detestable and base creatures. All right, that's why even to this point, you know, they call him, they call him wood wolves, which Esau, Esau know that's him. All right, Esau know that's him. They they can't even fit in a they you know they subhuman, they can't even fit in the category of human being. It says, yeah, where to might the strength of their hands profit me in whom old age was perished? For want and famine, they were solitude, solitary, fleeing into the wilderness. 
in former times desolate and waste, who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They were driven from among men. They cried after them as thief. And um, um, the Thirteenth Tribe, the book, the book is called. You know, they go into how um, these Edomites, how they were living. You know, in a, in a caveman state, when they, how they was, uh, how they would eat. You know, eat out of their dead grandparents' skull and wear clothing till it deteriorated. Never taking showers. You know how they, how they ate, how they conducted. All right. So this is all giving you the characteristics of of caveman uh, living. All right, juniper roots. You know they they in the bushes eating, eating them juniper roots. All right, they were driven from, forth from among men. They cried after them as thief. Now we read earlier in one of the uh, in the first article that that they were sometimes going that the the wood wolves would sometimes go and 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 raid villages and and take and steal and then run back to the to the you know to the forest or to the or really to the caves. All right. It says, now here's the point. It says, to dwell in the clefts of the valley, in the caves of the earth and in the rocks. Now, that's their true habitation. All right? Because who's going to go, who's really going to go and visit, you know, if, if anybody's going to have an encounter with, with, with these, with these wood wolves, it ain't going to, it's going to be in, it's going to be in the forest. All right? That's why they, they, you know, it was, it was perceived that their habitation was in the forest because who's going to go and check up on Esau and make sure everything is good? Make sure he's still in the caves. Make sure, hey, you saw you good? Nah, you know, whenever there was an encounter, they was dwelling among, they was dwelling up in the woods. All right. Whether for hunting reasons, you know, gathering juniper roots, you know, or any meat, whatever. You know? So to dwell in the clefts of the valley, in the caves of the earth, and in the rocks. And that's just the Edomites today. They love, they love, you know, them, 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 um, them rough, rugged terrain. For one, they love them skyscrapers and tall buildings. They love building complexes. They love apartments. They love penthouses. They love anything that reminisce of them being in, in, in caves and valleys and in cliffs of the rocks. All right. They love going hiking, camping. You know, hey, that's why the scriptures say, let me get it real quick. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 27. It says, And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Now, wood wolves mean man, uh, man of the woods. All right? Man of the woods. So uh, that's a spirit that, you know, that, that, that name wood wolves even stuck on them because Esau is a man of the field, and the field is the woods. You, you know, you got the woods is, is part of the fields. All right. He's a man of nature. He's always out there. That's why all these discovery channels, Nat Geographics and all these different exploring channels. It's all Edomites. You know how to survive 100 days in the wilderness. All Edomites. Jake ain't up. But we ain't up on that, man. All right. We're playing with simple people. We're, you know, I, we were set up to worship the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. To keep the law, statute, and commandments to the best of our ability. You know, Jacob, you know, plain man. All right. Plain man. The Lord set a set of simple plain rules to follow which is written in the scriptures but he saw you know he the guy that want to do zip lining you know a thousand feet in the, from a cliff you know zip lining parachuting he's a wild man you know he tempts the most high so again and the boys grew and esau was a cunning hunter a man of the field all right and that's these these edomites today they go hunting for sport, you know. They get they catch their prey and they set up. Um, I forget what they call them when they pretty much embalm the, the 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 animals that they kill and set them up as ornaments in their houses. All right, and dwelling in tents. All right, so let me go back to Job chapter thirty, and verse seven. It says, "Among the bushes they braid." Under the nettles, they were gathered together. Now, when you bray, it, it literally means to um, make a, a harsh noise like a donkey, you know. And that's that caveman sound that you know that 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 that, that man. I can't even imitate it, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about, you know. Among the bushes, they bray that 
you know, Planet of the Apes, you know, gorilla, you know, donkey screeching noise. That's the noise they made. They were they were wild, they were wild, they're wild creatures, man. All right, these are the bases of man we're talking about. All right, under the nettles they were gathered together. They were children of fools, yeah, children of base men. Children of base men. Base means extremely low. They were violent in the earth. And now I am their song. Yeah, I am their bower. Now, now I'm your song. All right, like, like Job is saying, now nah, I'm your song, right? You nigga, you come from this. You a damn woods. You a damn um 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 uh, woodswo <laughs> or oh, caveman. All right, now now you talking about me? Now you got all these names names about me. You know. Let me read on. Back in the article, it says, "As with Bigfoot, the wood the wood wolves, natural territory was believed to be the forest." It was believed to be, but it wasn't. It was the caves. And it too was said to be a hominoid covered in a heavy coat of hair. However, the wood wolf was really described as ape-like as Bigfoot is often. Rather, it was a creature very similar to other humans, but with a wild manner, an unusual amount of hair all over his body. Because they are regular, they are humans, they are regular people. Alright? They're just Edomites, okay? A different type of uh, people, so to speak, you know. Back in back in Genesis twenty-seven, it says uh, Jacob was a smooth man, but Esau's hairy. That uh, see, there's there's many details, there's plenty of details and 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 uh, and crumbs in the scriptures to let us know who this who this man will be in these last days. And then you got you know articles like this and and pictures. See, Esau know that, but you know what? He he gonna label it a mythological. This is him talking. I'm I, I'm sure this is an Edomite writing this, you know. But this is him talking. He he leave he leaves himself up to be a mythical creature, and then and then all the the the, the nice King Arthur's and everybody that was ruling at the time when he was making a fool out of himself, running around with all that hair in a club, all right. You know, brain in the bushes. You know why he was doing that. You know you had real you had Israelites in rulership. You know what I'm saying? But then he takes that identity and try to lump everybody in to be people of, of that type of nature going back millions of years ago. This man's a damn liar. That's how you cover that's how you cover a lie. I mean, right? That's how you 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 spark a lie and you keep it going. You, you just make up numbers and, and say five hundred million years ago. Who the hell could trace that? Who the hell could trace that? And people blind, blindly listen and follow and say, Oh yeah, okay. Shit, I mean, it's not like I could find out myself, so I, I guess I got to believe it. That's what the average retard says, man. You know, this man's a damn liar. The earth is nowhere near that. So it says, different theories have been put for, put forward about the origin of the wood wolves myth, including the medieval belief that wood wolves were people who had wandered into the woods as a mean of survival, grew hair to protect themselves from the elements. Another theory was that people born with excess body hair retreated from human society led to isolated lives as wild men and women in opposition to these ideas some modern researchers have proposed that woodwell sightings were actually sightings of neanderthals still living in medieval europe and there's so many so many loopholes in that because the short answer is that the ain't no theory all right it wasn't they ain't, they ain't grow excess body hair to adapt they ain't get driven out because it was hairy they were in that state because they lost their power as the as uh as the Romans, all right. Because during the medieval time, that was after the the pagan Roman Empire, all right. Then you had the Holy Roman Empire, all right, which really you know Jake, you know uh, got their start up in you know the transition to that around the three hundreds, all right. Um, so it says in another uh, hole in that is saying. Neanderthals still live in Europe, but it's supposed to be an evolution of, according to Esau science, it's supposed to be an evolution of from monkeys to humans. So that means if there were still Neanderthals, that would mean that they that these particular people were stuck in between for some reason and didn't evolve. All right. So where they at now? Did they evolve yet? <laughs> Did they evolve yet, or, or are they still stuck? 
in a Neanderthal state of being, which Neanderthal, it only, it simply means new man. Nia or Neo is new and Ander is from the, from the name Andrew, which means man. All right, so Neanderthal, new man, still living in medieval Europe. Now, that's the same old man, the same dragon, the same serpent, that, that old serpent, Satan. It says, while it is unclear exactly how the image of the woodwolves arose, once it entered the public's imagination, it became a common motive in architecture, the visual arts, and literature. For example, woodwolves were often featured in the decoration of medieval churches, most particularly in ceilings, but, uh, bosses, the pieces of sculptures placed at the intercessions of the overlapping roof vault. They were also depicted in works of art such as illustrate, illustrators, printmakers, as Albrecht Dorer and Martin um, Shanguer, the medieval writer Geoffrey of Mon Monmouth made mention of the man of the woods in his epic life of Merlin, as did the writer of the King's Mirror, a Norwegian educational treatise dating to 1250 CE. All right. Let me see. Now, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot more that could come out on this. Let me go back to the scriptures and see what else I was holding. That was pretty much in Job, Job's 30th chapter. All right. Let me get um, Daniel 4 and 17. It says, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand of the, and the, dem and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. All right. Plain and to the point. All right. The most high he rules in the kingdom of men. So all, all the kings of this earth are his chess pieces, all right? And he set them up how you want to set them up. And in this particular case, in these day and times that we're living in now, he set up a particular base man called the Edomites, all right? Because when you read up above um, Nebuchadnezzar, he was he was turned into a beast-like state where he actually thought he was a beast, you know, actually resembled a beast and did things that a beast would do, all right? Which was spiritual, because that's almost like a foreshadow of Esau coming into power. All right, in these latter times, you know, in a way. You know what I'm saying? Because Esau is the basis of all men now. And he came from that to where he's at now. You know, advanced scientists, which it show you the power of the Heavenly Father, man. Because he, <laughs> there's no way in hell in that short period of time. Come on, man. From the, from the time, from the Renaissance to now. How many years are we talking? What, six, seven hundred years? You know, let's say 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, not even 600 years, something like, you know, around that. And all that technology this man got, you know, all of a sudden he became a, 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 a genius overnight. That's all the power of the Heavenly Father. Like I tell you in Daniel, the 12th chapter, that knowledge shall be increased. All right, that knowledge shall be increased. Yep, verse 4 says, But thou, Daniel, Shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Knowledge shall be increased. Why? Because we at the end. Knowledge is being increased on the left hand side and on the right. You know why? Because we're at the end. All right. And knowledge being increased is gonna is only gonna do one thing, and that's gonna speed up the downfall of this man's kingdom. All right, because he's gonna come with his knowledge and in, in increase in an in, a, in an increasing way. All right, to bring forth one of his major, um, uh, one of the major technologies, showing you that, like the pastor always say, that the MOT to the B is the Most High's uh, technology. It belonged to the Most High. He created it. He gave Esau the, the 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 knowledge and understanding to create it. You know, so knowledge must be increased to fulfill prophecy. One another thing that's that's you know in the news now. I mean, I'm not sure mainstream news, but brothers is talking about it. Is uh, you got CERN. All right, they come. They they opening back shop on uh, March, all right, March of this year, I and mean, if you don't know what CERN is, look it up, all right, so the Lord is going to have this man, you know, put the spirit on this man to have that knowledge increase, 
you know, at a rapid pace in order to bring forth, you know, the words of the Heavenly Father and the prophecies. Okay. So, um, let me go, let me go back. I believe we got a, you know, understanding of, these look like regular Edomites are just mad hair on them, man. All right, regular Edomites. If you, because if you, if you shave off all that body hair, cut off his hair, give him a little, you know, you know, leave his hair, whatever, cut it off, shave his beard, he's gonna look like a regular Edomite, man. You know, these are these are these are Edomites, man. Basis of all men. All right. There's many scriptures that could come out on the nature and the characteristics of this devil. You know, so that hey, that's 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 the ruler. This is who's ruling us today. This is ruling the world today, these woodwolves, all right, a.k.a. the Edomites, all right? So I believe, I believe I covered everything. Let me um finish up with this. It's Isaiah 47 and 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no be called tender and delicate. Take the millstone and grind meal. Uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thighs, pass over the rivers. Which is virgin daughter of Babylon is talking about America. Alright, it's gonna be brought down. That's why the scripture says sit sit on the, sit in the dust. Sit on the ground. There's no throne or door of the child of Dean. Because there's gonna be no more be called tender and delicate because the Lord is gonna level this place by the way of thermonuclear destruction. Alright, and before he's doing that, he's dismantling this place through the words of the, of, of him of his words, through the prophets. All right, take millstone, grind meal, uncover thy locks, make bare thy legs, uncover thy thighs, pass over the rivers. Meaning that these nations are seeing their nakedness. They're seeing the nakedness of Babylon the Great. All right, it says, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yet they, excuse me, yet thy shame shall be seen. So Esau's nakedness is being uncovered all around. That's why he got to come with that wrath. Hey, remember Daniel 12 it says, Now it shall be increased, it's being increased. On the right hand side as well as the left. All things are made in, in twos and in pairs. Good and evil. All right, Good is set against evil. So the more evil you got, is the more good you're going to have. Which the good is, is, is through the word of Yahweh Bashem El That's why we, through the spirit of the Lord, push as hard as we do. You know, starting with the apostles, of course. From apostle to Haran down, which are prime examples on how, you know, we should be pushing in this faith. You know, because, hey, this man, this man ain't giving us no slack. This this devil, this this wood wolf's cracker ain't giving us no slack. You know, he ain't cutting us no slack, man. He he, he pray for our downfall every day. You know, dude, that's why the scripture said accuse of our brethren. Alright. He prays for our downfall daily. And he does things. He don't just pray for it. He do things to bring it into existence. You know, so we gotta, you know, practice the same thing on the right hand side, man. Pray for this man's downfall and do things to bring it into existence, which is to push the word. You know, push the word, push that, that spirit out there, man. You know? Cause he knows his time is up. And and this is this is a, a a losing battle on his part. And it's a winning battle for us because he ain't gonna win. He ain't gonna win. The Lord said, I would take vengeance and I would not meet thee as a man. The Lord is not gonna meet these devil as devils as a man, man. <laughs> All right? It's over. It's over for these crackers. All right, these damn wood woses. You know, I believe I believe I covered everything I wanted to say, man. You know, these ain't no mythical creatures, man. This reminds me of that storybook from back in the day when we was kids, uh, where the wild things are. You know, they had hairy ass creatures living in the forest. It looked just like it looked like it looked just like this. You know, where the wild things are. You know. Let me see if there's anything else. <sighs> Definition of woodwolves. There have always been folk folklore tales of hairy men, hairy man like creatures living in forests of England back in the Middle Ages as they were known as woodwolves. Yeah, and all these Edomite tribes, because you got you got plenty of tribes of Esau, you know, were, were all, you know, in, in a bad state, so to speak, in a, a base state during these times. 
you know. But the Lord let him loose for a season. Like it tell you in the book of Revelation that he's going to be loose for a season. All right. So with that, man, um, I pray and hope to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh that this was an edifying lesson to the elect of the nation of Israel. And with that, till next time I say Shalom.